Uh, we do have the coach with us, and he's going to walk us through a big deal that was made yesterday. Coach Carroll, good morning. How What's are up? you? Wow, I, we got everybody in the house. Here. Everybody's this is kind of here. That's what yes. happens. Everybody. It's even, a big day, even. right? You're committing to a quarterback. We're moving forward. How did this get done? Yeah, um, really well. <laughs> was done really well. Everybody uh, stayed really, you know, on point. Communication was great. Um, the focus was there to, to get something done, and and uh, so we got it done in timely fashion. You know, we we're ahead of free agency, which we needed to do, and and uh, really everybody's thrilled about it. Um, the owner, was, you know, Jody was great about it all the way through. She gave uh, John the freedom to do what he needed to do to make the deal, and then then in in visiting her with her yesterday, she was really pleased and excited. She 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 took a lot out of Gino's accomplishments in last year, and and uh, was really proud of him and and excited to, you know for the future and moving on. So everybody's connected on it. So it's a good deal, and a good deal for a club. And I think it sends a really good message too to the everybody on the outside. That this is this is a good place, you know, and and uh, the, the, things are going in the right direction. And we're fired up about it. We see the headline yesterday. From the day that we talked to you last after the, the 49er that Monday, and you said we're bouncing right into this offseason, right? Amazing draft capital, and we'll get to that in a little bit, and these decisions to make. When we talked to you that day to, what, about two months later, how much work goes into this Geno deal? Is it an everyday thing for you? Is it every week? Is it just kind of the behind-the-scenes, I guess, process to get well, this done? Well, you, know, you know, really give credit where credit is due. I'm, I'm riding along with John on this one, and uh, he and Matt Thomas were, you know, on it constantly to make sure that we had a schedule and we would the communication was excellent you know and ongoing and there was no voids because there's in these kinds of negotiations the spaces can really cause issues you know and uh both you know gino's representation and our guys just didn't let that happen what so, do you mean the spaces well the the, the time frames you know because yeah. it's just the the quiet times you know and, you, and the minds start rolling and everybody's thinking this or thinking that all the alternatives what's going on you know and, and uh that can cause problems but we, we were very sensitive to making it a great pros, uh, uh, process. And so it was ongoing. Yeah, it was on the whole time. We were always talking about it. And it, it, it's meaningful in so many areas. It, working together so that we would have an opportunity to continue to compete, to bring guys to this club and get guys on our, on our team in the locker room uh, was it's been at hand, and now really, now we're really rolling. You know, we we can plan, we can plan, but until we knock the big one in the boat, and, and the other things that happened, Jason was a really big deal. You know, getting Bellore was a really big deal to us. Uh, Philip Haynes was a, a. Those were all really significant steps along the way that were all planned, and they've they've come off like we hoped. And so now there's a whole next uh, you know sequence of things that are going to come together. And so here we go. What is it about Gino that made you want to commit to him? Uh, all of the confidence in the world he, he gave us by the way he handled himself. Um, I, I think, you know, it's not the physical part of it. It's, it's really the other side of it. His his view, his perspective throughout was so clear and, and consistent, and, uh, and and he was so confident, and he backed it up, you know, and, and uh, he backed it up with his words, and he backed it up with his actions, and and, uh, and his teammates know, you know, every, every aspect of it. It just worked out really, really well, and um, this was hard for him. I mean, this is a huge challenge, challenge of a lifetime, and he came through. And uh, to see it, see him handling it so well, it, we marveled at that. And but then he never wavered, and so it just gave us all the confidence to continue on. Can you win a Super Bowl during Geno Smith's contract? Heck yeah, we could. Heck yeah, we can. He he's going to do his part. We got to do the. We have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of stuff we have to get done. We have a, a, a lot of decisions to make. This extraordinary draft coming up has been ongoing too, and we haven't left that topic either. You know that's been ongoing. So there's multiple topics, like just like I like a lot of balls in the air at the same time. <laughs> you know, let, let the music play and let's you know let's be dancing, let's do the whole thing. Well, that's what's going on, and and uh, but the the focus focus right now obviously is continuing the evaluations for the draft but free agency is is at hand you know you mentioned that word confidence and i think trust as well like you you know to play that position you got to just gain the trust of your teammates you got to gain the trust of the staff we talk to you every monday you know during the season and there were moments after moments where it's like man he's just getting it and he's just doing the right thing through the ups and the downs and the accountability and everything else but was there a moment or two that stood out to you as you kind of look in the rear view last year and go yeah Okay, yeah, that, that's another big step in the trust. Yeah, yep, a, that's yeah, another big yeah, it was step. After, I think it was after game two. You just, uh, I think I might have said something to you guys, but that's when I, he's he's going to be able to do it. You know, you could get that feeling, so let's go. And we don't. And that was in San Francisco? So Denver to open, right, yeah, in was, San Francisco? It, it was after, it was just 
two weeks into it, we just knew that he could he could carry out what we were trying to get done, and he was confident about it, and he was handling it. He was handling himself in front of the team and all of that. You could just see that, you know, we, Gina was going to have a, a chance to have a really good run at this thing. You mentioned free agency. How flexible can can this deal allow you to be in free agency? We have some flexibility. You know, I, we don't have a lot, but we have some flexibility. We have to be really smart, really judicious about every every step of the way here. Um, and so, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're excited about it because it's just about ready to kick this thing off. Can you help me with some of the theory or the philosophy behind that? I mean, we, we see these teams that just seem like every year they can pile player after player after player and their cap goes up and up. And, and eventually, sometimes they have to pay the piper years down the road. You guys don't seem to go down that. Is that a philosophical decision? Yeah, we're, yeah we're, we're a little bit more contained than that. And we're trying to, you know, have make really good decisions along the way and still compete and and. To do that, we have to be patient. You know, we have to take our take our shots here when they come. We we don't want to be frenzied entering this first week of free agency because that's where you can make huge mistakes. You make huge commitments to make decisions. You got to go for it. And so you know, we'll, we're going to work our way through it. Notice how many players keep coming off rosters and stuff. There's, it's happening. There's a there's a real attrition rate, and that we have to be available for those moments too. So. Uh, you know we're we're going to be you know we're going to be wise about it hopefully and make really good decisions that are going to fit us we're deep deep into that and i I'm, i can't talk about any of it but but we're deep into it right now and and we've been working on this for really for weeks so it's a it's an exciting time that's coming up with this geno deal just the last couple things cuz the the numbers are starting to come out and we're starting to see the actual not just the headline but the actual numbers to it uh, it feels like there's a bunch of incentives that he built into this, kind of like his deal last year where he yeah. met, I think, every one of them and doubled his, his salary because of that. How important was that in structuring this deal from your side and equally getting him to, to buy into that side that this will still be a pretty incentive-laden deal? Yeah, when, when you guys get your chance and you really dig in, you'll see that it, it, it is it is you know leaning that way we're we're counting on him coming through and doing the things that he was able to do last year and, and if he if he does that he's going to get rewarded and uh we know that if that if he's able to come back and do that he's going to have a great season and we're going to be in great shape we're going to have a real chance to be at the best at our best so um it is heavily structured that way and uh you know, I know he, he he's gambling a little bit in that sense on himself. Which yeah, is, I mean, what does that say about he, him? No, to he's, do he's that. clear about it. And they were, you know, this was part of it and uh, throughout. So it's a it's a really strong part of the contract, and and I think that's maybe why the ownership is so happy with it too. If you if you perform and you get it done, and you know, it, it, uh, gladly we would reward, you know. And so I th- I think that was a real combination of of thinking that that worked out for us. When we talk about committing, we're talking to Pete Carroll here. When we talk to, to about committing. This this, this contract to Geno Smith, does it prevent you? Does it allow you to draft a quarterback as well and continue to look towards the future? We, that uh, that opportunity is absolutely there. We could do whatever we need to do, you know, and, and uh, um, which is a whole nother, you know, discussion of what's really exciting. And, you know, the coaches are working at it and the scouts are working at it to try to position this thing. When there's only – you're at five, this is different than we're used to seeing. You know, this is really fun because you can – pretty much predict what what's going to happen with you know four different choices you know so which one is it and and uh so um it's 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 we're alive and all you know and, and all guns are blazing here how good is this draft class um it's interesting class there's a lot of good players um it's not as obvious on the top of just the the great guys that you got to have you know 10 8 8 or 9 10 picks off the top that's not as obvious there's a bunch of good players and so um, it's kind of how you want to go, and we're going to see what you know what the quarterback interest is early. You know, see what, if teams are going to go get it. You know, to get the QB that they want. These guys are really talented. They they look great at the combine. They, they were great in the interviews. Uh, they did. Uh, they really did well by themselves, and so it didn't make it any easier for us. <laughs> you know, that, there's no easy decisions here, but that's okay. This is really this is fun stuff. Salk asked me earlier, "What do you think about Gene? What would Gino think if they took a quarterback and took one pretty high?" And I'm like. Well, I think knowing Gino and even this deal, like betting on himself to a degree, I don't think Gino would mind too yeah, much. Yeah, just know Gino. And how, how's he going to take? He, whatever we do, he's going to be. He's he's going to take it in stride. He's not going to worry about anybody. And and this is as a reward to what he's done. Even solidifies his confidence and understanding how much trust we have in him. So, um, you know, and if that if that is to happen, that is a choice for for the long haul, of the future, and, and all of that. We'll see what happens. This feels like a QB class, and you know, I was just showing Salk some game tape earlier of you know i don't know this kid out of florida that's 
six four two four. There's a guy in Florida runs four right. four eight and jumped forty and a half inches. This is a draft. Kind of reminds you of yourself, right? Yeah, you know, we we compared and contrasted. I had him by an inch. Four four. I was six five. Let's you, you see. Were you were a half inch taller than yeah. him. He has me by about a second. I think I ran five four. He ran <laughs> four four. So a little different in that way. But this this QB class in particular feels is like traitsy, right? A term that the scouts and these analysts love to use, like check that box, check that box, check that box. They feel as a as a group maybe to have more of those physical traits than some of the previous draft classes. Is that fair? Uh, I don't know about that. One. I don't know. You haven't paid attention. We, we, to those have, other we haven't classes. been in those deals, you yeah. know, those kinds of opportunities. So it's I can't tell you as clearly as this class. But these guys are all they, they're they're singling themselves out in their individual ways that they have. You know, uh, that it's, it's giving you some choices of style. You know, and and uh, a background. You know, these guys are smart. They're they're so grooved. I mean, they've just learned so much football. To hear them in their meetings, they just rip off protections and concepts and routes and adjustments and line of scrimmage and changing the plays and all of the things that they know how to do. Um, Different than the '90s, not, combines? not calling, not calling the huddle as much, but they're calling. They're doing everything. Right. It's just as at the tip of their tongue, you know, to, to control whatever they need to control, and they're so fluent. It's really impressive. Uh, and these are just college kids. You know, they're just yeah. getting here. You know, to know as much as they know is just knocked us out. Pete, it was a year ago tomorrow that you guys finalized the trade for Russell Wilson and yeah. and changed the direction of this franchise considerably. What have you learned since then? Well, um, what have I learned? Um, that sometimes you got to make tough decisions and you got to go for it, and you got to, you know, that, that just reemphasized to me that sometimes you got to just say what the heck and go, you know, and and uh, um, with really a good commitment of people and connection with the people that have to, you know, and bring in the input for those decisions, you can you can make good solid choices, and and uh, and it, it worked, you know, we we it worked out. Uh, tremendously for us, and, and we're that's why we're sitting in, in the position for this draft, and we have a our, our f- some funds to work free agency because of it, and uh, and we're excited about it too. We've had a great deal of excitement about this whole thing that's taking place, and so we're looking ahead, and and, and we didn't have to rebuild to do that, and, and I know that it may have. I, I didn't convince a lot of people of that. <laughs> I kept telling them, but we didn't have to do that mode, you know, and, and uh, we, we were able to go for it and, and uh, didn't quite get it, but uh, we were close. So the years leading up to that decision, because I'm guessing it wasn't made like a year ago today, and then the next day you traded Russell Wilson. There was a lot of conversation, a lot of thought, and everything that went into that moment. Do you have any, I don't want to say regrets, but anything that you would do differently if you could go back to the previous few years leading up to that decision? Is there anything you would do differently? Yeah, there's there's some stuff. I'm, I don't think I need to account for it all, but there's there's uh, there's stuff along the way um, that we you know, we might have tried to follow the, the essence and the facts of what was going on more than kind of the hype. You know, we get caught up in some of the hype of it all and, uh, and, and that we could have done that a little bit better, I think, and, and everybody would have prospered. Everybody would have prospered. Um, but um, all in all, you know, we had a great run, you know, and we've won a lot of games and we were, had a lot of success and there was a lot of excitement and there was always hope in, in that we could do stuff and we could win. You know, we won a, you know, we won a lot of games, but it's really hard to get back to that darn Super Bowl. You know, that's that's the whole prize. And um, unfortunately, we, we couldn't quite get there. I, we might have been able to maneuver our way to stay closer to that, you know, and, and those maybe three. Then we went to the playoffs a couple of years right after that, too. Right. Mm-hmm. And that, so any one of those years right in there, you know, there's some stuff that we could have done that would have kept us on track. It would have been cool. But but to just be where we were was special. You know, just look and look how it goes, you know, and, and it, it's difficult. The Rams have had a really hard yeah. time, you know, responding to it. So there's I, I think that we may not have captured all of those years as much as well as I'd like. Well, to and think. I'm sure you've learned quite a bit from that and making the decisions that sure. you're making now. You know, we've heard some of, you know, your ex-players, et cetera, and talking about those years talk about accountability and we've heard sort of talk of uh, and from your side almost strategically accommodating some of the things your quarterback wanted to do is that what you mean when you talk about things that could be done differently no, i know i some but i strategically accommodate a lot of players we i was doing that the whole time <laughs> and this was a very uh, worthwhile effort to be made because these guys deserved it. They deserved the treatment. They deserved the the mentality and the way we dealt with stuff. Um, 
to keep them at their best. That was that was the great challenge is to keep everybody functioning at a really high level. And some the attention got distracted at times. But I mean, there's a lot of let's go back and just look at the individual stories I was working with. You know, we had a lot of guys that deserved a lot of attention, a lot of focus to keep them at the height that they were performing at. And and then eventually it starts to move. You know, the guys get older and it, it, it's hard to hold on to that edge and all that. But that's the thing I you know I like. When I go back, I wish I could tweak a couple little things here and there and keep it a little bit tighter and a little bit better. Is it tweaking the way you coached or tweaking some of the decisions you guys made as an organization to keep people around? All of that. And not so much to keep people around, just to keep them going at their best, to find the way to keep them at the top of their game, you know, and and keep it all mixing well and and all that and making the right choices as guys transitioned out. You know, that that's a that's a that's a big challenge. That's a challenge I had never faced in coaching. You know, I'd never been there before in college. Five years are gone, you know, and okay, that's that's it. And and years before there wasn't enough years. We got into generational football, you know, and, and we had to deal with those factors. And that was the first time figuring that out. I think I'm better at the thought of that now. And I, I would love that challenge again, you know, as I look back. So, um, but that was a new deal. I think the report came out while you guys were at the combine with Russell Wilson and the history and the things that he may or may not have done because he refutes a lot of what was put out there of, of him wanting you know you and, and John to be uh, let go. And you said, I'm going to hang with him. I'm going to hang with him. And I think we talked the next day, like your ability to hang with a lot of these personalities over the years <laughs> and you just continue, whether they, you know, flip you off on the field or they scorch earth on the way out. You just continue to hang. How? How and why? How, how, how well will you hang with your kids? You know, if your kids, however they handle life and they deal with their changes and their challenges, are you going to bag on those guys because, you know, and your, and your son or your daughter because they say something or do something or get together with the wrong person or take the wrong job or sell the wrong house or whatever, whatever it is, you know, I mean, if you love them, you love them and you're going to look, look for them to come back around. And, and if you give them the chance by demonstrating your unconditional thought to them, maybe you can help them find that too. And what I'm, what I'm un, have uncovered in my time here is our guys come back and they come back to us strong and they come back to us with, uh, with gratitude and appreciation and, Still an attitude, which I love, you know, <laughs> that's okay. And we don't have to agree on everything, you know, but we went through it together and when this is what happened and, you know, and we'll take what we got, you know, and, and, uh, and ho- hopefully learn from it and make better the next time around, you know, so um, it, it's pretty clear to me, this is not the big challenge to, to hang with people, you know, these guys gave us everything they had and, and they willingly went for it in, in every way that they could as best as we could. And, that to me, I, well, how could I not hang with that? Mm-hmm. You know, that's all I need. I don't need nothing more than that. So you, you do seem to sort of equate coaching and parenting a fair amount, and it makes sense. We talked to Scott Service. I think he oftentimes says similar things. There's got to be a lot of, you know, in common between coaching players and parenting your kids. Um, one challenge, though, is there does sometimes come a time to move on from players. That's right. And if you've treated them as a child and you've treated them as a father figure, et cetera, does that make it harder for them to accept the fact that, hey, this is going to come to an end and it's not going to always be exactly Yeah, first of all, I didn't like what you said we treat him as a child because I don't want to. Fair, I don't mean it like that. I know that. I know that. I just don't want to accept that one. But, um, yeah, like I, I've thought and I've clearly come to the point where if I've if a guy's got to get let go or he's got to get cut or you got to tell him I want to be the guy to tell him and and if sometimes it doesn't always work out exactly the way I'd like but I would like to be there for the hard the hard stuff too and and so um you know I who would better feel their way through that moment than I can do it that's what I that's why I want to be there I don't want to and so when it doesn't separate well you know it, it pisses me off that I didn't get it done properly but the intent is always to okay let's talk through it boom we, you know KJ and I went with this a great illustration. KJ and I sat in the locker room one in the in the weight room one day and talked through all this stuff and we looked at each other and we knew we were on it. And it wasn't the you know, the best stuff that we had decided was gonna come about, but yet we had done it heart to heart and it, it was it was a beautiful thing. And and so we haven't lost beat we haven't lost step at all, you know, and it's that's what I'm hoping for. It doesn't always work out that way, but that's okay. You know, mm-hmm. if it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm I'm that's how I'm gonna try to get it done. And on the flip side of that, here in the next week or two, free you know, free agency begins, a new league year begins, you probably get a chance to recruit. So we're talking about the tail end of we'll it. We'll be recruiting a little bit now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I kind of like that, you know. Do you, do you enjoy that <laughs> end of it a little bit more? Heck yeah, I do. I, I, and, I mean, I, 
what I what I wind up telling guys that this is we we're like this, we're like that. This is what you can expect. And then I say, okay, but I'm stopping. To, I'm going to stop talking about it. I'm going to prove it to you when you get here, and, and you, I'll show you. And but so get here so we can prove it to you. You know, <laughs> and I, it was the same thing in the living rooms. You know, in recruit. You know, okay, I can tell you how good this all is. You get here. I'm going to prove it to you, and then I'm going to remind you that it turned out like we said. <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> and stick it to you a little bit. You know, so yeah. if you doubt me now, you know. Anyway, we've never seen that side of you. He's sticking it to you side. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Over the course of doing these interviews for, <laughs> no. what is it, 13 years now. Uh, how different will your defense look next year compared to what we saw this year? Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how we do. We've got, um, you know, we've got some big decisions to make, and uh, we've got to get better. We've got to play better. Um, we transitioned uh, from our scheme uh, not as tightly as I wanted to, and so this and since the day it was over, we've been on it. And you talk about stuff we're focusing on, you know, with our guys and our coaches, and and, and for our players to really tighten the thing so it's really, really uh, to the point where it can be great and we can play great football. There's going to be some decisions made. We got to get some guys in to come to us to help us out. We've got some guys banged up that are coming back. We've got to see how that goes. Uh, but uh, my intention in focus is is on that as, as anything as much as anything we're doing do you anticipate filling sean desai's role i know he wasn't a position coach um, per se yeah, matter of fact um uh <laughs> last night I, I secured that we'll wait till we, till we announce it because I, I don't know where, where we are in the formalities of that but okay. yeah yeah we did get we did uh, hook up with a guy um last night that we're really excited about that um, our coaches have worked with before he's been in the scheme been in uh various schemes that will really help us um uh Really, I can tell you that Carl Scott is going to take a bigger role, and and he'll do a great job with the passing game and and uh, fill that you know that kind of the immediate spot that way. Okay. Uh, he'll be the um, senior assistant in passing. Game and this is different than the pass rush specialist that was also. That's, added. No, that's, that's another thing yeah. I'm really excited about. Where do you guys where do you guys see BT Jordan get after it? He, he can coach him up now. <laughs> he's got he's got you can pull him up. Uh, he's on uh, YouTube all over the place with the, all the guys he's worked out through the interviews that we were going through mm-hmm. uh, and the phone calls that we got since that that word has gotten out um, he's he's got his he's got his his lines out in the water now he's worked with a lot of people and a lot of people love what he does and what he brings so I think it's a really special element mm-hmm. right now too, with, available right with, now with, too. well with with our young guys too you know with uh, uh, Daryl coming on and and, and Mafe showing his stuff and of course Chenna had a good year Bruce had a good year uh, on the edge we had a nice nice stuff going on there and there's some options in in the draft too you know coming up so um, he's going to be a big part of it mm-hmm. so I'm excited you guys got that. a busy couple of months ahead of you. oh man Man, this, These next two months it, be it, fun, has, huh? it has not been not busy. It's been on the whole time. Just like you said, <laughs> uh, you know, the going to work on the defensive scheme stuff and connecting the, the things we want to connect. That's that was immediate. You know, so it, there hasn't really been downtime. It's been uh, it's been pretty fun. We could sit here and talk to you all morning, but we gotta we gotta run. Okay. We gotta pave the way well, for Bumpus Stacy. <laughs> no, we gotta give up. I, I got, look, I got a couple. I got another. Hey, minutes here Michael here. Bumpus <laughs> has to get on the air. I can Bump. hear him clamoring. Stacy needs stick to around. get on the yeah, air. They yeah. got questions for you too. You too. <laughs> Call me, Bump. Uh, we will be back tomorrow morning, six a.m., and we will have Brock's buddy Matt Stinch. Matt Stinch come SEC Ooh, Network going to join us tomorrow. I don't know. There might be some SEC guys in the draft this year. Maybe even some that throw the ball a little bit. So that's tomorrow. We'll see you guys at 6 a.m. Until then, the hay is in the barn barn. See you, everybody.